morning. Good afternoon, family. I'm going to go right back to this uh, story. I'm going to go right back to this particular um, uh, uh, article by Ida B. Wells. Because it's really important that we talk about, you know, the nature of white mobs who um, they have a lot of pleasure going around talking about how violent uh, black people are. I'm going to try to fix uh, this camera, y'all. I don't know what the hell's going on. It look crazy as heck, but let's see what we can do. Um, but again, like I said, uh, white people going around acting like we are so barbaric. When in actuality, what, what history reflects is that there's no other diabolical people. When you look at the berserkers, when you look at just the bloodthirst that these people had, um, it is impossible to compare anybody else. I mean, it is impossible to c compare this madness with any other group of people. So, I don't understand why, again, a lot of uh, white folk are angry because they feel that they are being unjustly uh, portrayed. It, it, you're not. This is your history being brought up right before your very eyes. Nobody made this stuff up. This is what you have done to the human family. And I think it's really important that you understand your legacy and your history here on this earth. Everything's going crazy now, as y'all can see. Um, uh, so we're going to get, I want to get back into this because I want y'all to make sure y'all hear this article. Hear this. Hear Ida B. Well Soul talking to you people. To hear Ida B. Wells talking to us family. It is very important that we acknowledge our ancestors and the people who tried to give us the roadmaps to go on. Um, it's very imperative. Very imperative. God, I don't understand what's wrong with this camera, you guys. I have no idea. If somebody know what's going on, please let me know. It's got something to do with these filters. I can't find a normal filter, but I am finding a bunch of filters that look either black and white. Um, I don't know, maybe I should try to bring some more lighting over here and see if this works, helps out some. Otherwise, it's not a good look, even though y'all want to hear. Not so important that what it looks like. It's just so kind of important about what it sounds like. I, I do agree with that one. What's up here? Now there's nothing coming. <laughs> wow. What's up here? What's up here? Okay. It's the only thing I can do, you guys, because these filters are off. I don't know what to tell you, but I just want to continue to bring the words to you of Sister Ida B. Wells, our ancestor, who's gone on now, who gave us writing a hand. Don't, let's don't learn all our lessons the hard way. Let's try to remember some of the things that um, were laid out before us and some of the warnings that our ancestors tried to leave us with. Because otherwise, we're just spinning our wheels in the dirt and we're acting just like the people who captured us, right? Okay, so I want to read this one more time. It said, the world looks on and it says it is well. Not only are 200 men and women put to death annually on average in this country by mobs. By mobs, you guys, not by police, by mobs. Um, but these lies are taken with the greatest publicity. In many instances, the leading citizens aid and abet by their presences, by their presence when they do not participate. And the leading journals inflame the public mind to the lynching point with scarehead articles and offer rewards. Whenever see so so that's the media's 
influence on this madness that you see. People saying, what? The media, the media, this, the media. You damn right. The media works in cahoots with white supremacy. All these institutions are nothing but institutions of flying monkeys. So those of y'all that really want to talk about narcissism and uh, things of that nature, you're going to have to talk for real because you've got all these institutions in place that operate as um, roadblocks to freedom for black people. Okay? Uh, there's no way around this. Whenever a burning is advertised to take place, the railroads run excursions. See, they all was in cahoots on our misery. Every one of them. And you can trust these people. And this government, this government has got to be held accountable. And if they're not holding those people accountable that came into the White House on January 6th, what the hell you think they're going to do with us? So we're going to have to get our minds right. Either we're going to love each other and walk as one, or we're going to continue all this scatterbrain stuff and end up in the situation like I'm in right now, looking at my people and going, what the hell is ever going to happen to us? How are we going to go down in history? How? Because we are great people. And have done some great things. And we've, we're losing every bit of our greatness over here in America. If we continue this self-destructiveness that we're um, uh, um, perpetrating against one another. I'm sitting up here with a heavy heart. My brother has been murdered by another black man. I mean, this has got to stop. My sister was murdered by a black man. Y'all understand what this is saying about us? <laughs> there is, however, the, this difference. In the old days, the multitude that stood by was permitted only to guy or jeer. The 19th century lynching moms cut off ears, toes, fingers, strip off flesh, and distribute portions of the body as souvenirs among the crowd. This is the kind of people you're dealing with. Do you understand? Do you understand me? Let me go back and start this one more time. There is, however, this difference. In the old days, the multitude that stood by was permitted only to guy or jeer. The 19th century lynching mobs cut off ears, toes, fingers, strips of flesh, and distributes portions of the body as souvenirs amongst the crowd. Need I say penises? Breasts? If the leaders of the mob are so minded, coal oil is poured over the body and the victim, and then they're roasted to death. This has been done in Texarkana and Paris, Texas, Barswell, Kentucky, and in Newman, Georgia. In Paris, the officers of the law delivered the prisoners to the mob. That's Paris, Texas. I want y'all to understand what you're dealing with. The police officers delivered the prisoner to the lynch mobs. And so when y'all look at Kyle Rittenhouse and you wonder how the police let him walk away, do you have your answer now? This stuff is on the books, y'all. Am I making this stuff up? The mayor gave school children a holiday and the railroads ran excursion trains so that the people might see a human being being burned to death. This was white folks' entertainment. In Turkana, the year before, men and boys mused themselves by cutting off strips of flesh and thrusting knives into their helpless victims. At Newman, Georgia, of the present year, the mob tried every conceivable torture to compel the victim to cry out and confess before they set on fire to the faggots that burned him. But their trouble was all in vain. He never uttered a cry, and they could never make him confess. That's the kind of stuff we used to have. So Y'all talk about stuff today, torture today. 
This brother still didn't give them what they wanted. They, he still didn't give them what they wanted. And they found pleasure in the bloodthirstiness of trying to make this man break. Buck, buck breaking. This is the history of white people. I ain't making this up. Now, YouTube is going to censor this video, of course. I mean, I'm not if, if it goes up. But the point I'm, at, I'm trying to make here is this is history. Why censor history? Why don't y'all want to see y'all ugly history played out right in front of you? Because you're doing the same stuff today. You've never stopped. You just put a little pink dress on it and a bow, and you think that you dressed up the damn pig. The condition of affairs were brutal enough and horrible enough that if it were true that lynchings occurred only because of the commission of crimes against women, as is constantly declared by minister, editors, lawyers, teachers, statesmen, and even by the women themselves, it has been to the interest of those who did the lynching to blacken the good name of helpless and defenseless victims of their hate. This is pure hatred. Nothing more, nothing less. Y'all the master blood shedders. The master haters. That's not the will in the heart of black people. We're always trying to help you. Christopher Columbus noticed the nature of us. Because we know we produced you. We don't feel threatened. Initially. Oh, but you work very hard to let us know. Who is human and who is not? Who is humane and who is not? It has been to the interest of those who did the lynching to blacken the good name of helpless, defenseless victims of their hate. For this reason, they published every possible opportunity to excuse for the lynching hoping thereby not only to palliate their own crime, but at the same time to prove that the Negro is a moral monster and unworthy of respect and sympathy by the civilized world. This, But this alleged reason adds to the deliberate injustice of the mob's work. This is what's ingrained in white folk. This is what they have been allowed to get away with. Who going to put the reins on them now? They've had the ability and been allowed to lynch us, been allowed to beat us, burn us, and with the help of the government. With the help of the United States government. Instead of lynching being caused by assaults upon women, the statistics show that not one third of the victims of lynching are even charged with such crimes. The Chicago Tribune, which publishes annual lynching statistics, is the authority of the following. Uh, for the following, in, 18, uh, in 1892, when lynchings reached a high watermark, there were 241 persons lynched. The entire number is divided among the states. So they're telling you in this article right here, okay? Um, Alabama, for instance, had 22, Arkansas, 25, California, 3, Florida, 11, Georgia, 17. Uh, Idaho 8, Illinois 1, Kansas uh, 3, Kentucky 9, Louisiana 29, Maryland 1. These all represent people that these white folks done put up on trees and hung. I just want y'all to know that. Some of your uncles, your grandfathers, your cousins, my uncles. You see what I'm saying? My grandfathers. Our peoples. Okay. Maryland 1, Mississippi 16, Missouri 6, Montana 4, New York 1, North Carolina 5, North Dakota 1, Ohio 3, South Carolina 5, Tennessee 28, Texas 15, Virginia 7, West Virginia um, 5, Wyoming 9, Arizona Territories, territories 3, and Oklahoma 2. How many of y'all know that? That these towns are known for lynching black folk? How many of y'all know y'all history? 
like that. Of this murder, 160 were Negro descent. Four of them were lynched in New York, Ohio, and Kansas. The remainder were murdered in the South. Five of this number were females. The charges for which they were lynched cover a wide range, but they are as follows. Rape, 46. Murder, 58. Rioting, 3. Race prejudice, 6. No cause given, 4. Incendiarism, 6. Robbery, 6. Assault and battery, 1. No offense stated. Boy and a girl. 2. Attempted rape. 11. Suspected robbery. 4. Larceny. 1. Self-defense. 1. Insulting women. 2. <sighs> Desperados. Um, 6. Fraud. 1. And attempted murder. 2. Make up as you go along. 100. In the case of the boy and the girl referred to above, their father named Hastings was accused of the murder of a white man. His 14-year-old daughter and his 16-year-old son were hanged and their bodies filled with bullets. Then the father was also lynched. This occurred in November of 1892 in Jonesville, Louisiana. Why they kill his kids? What they have to do with it? This is the history of this country, y'all. This is who we've been under the stewardship of. These type of people. So the problem is not us. The problem is certainly them. And their thirst for blood. Their thirst for uh, uh, control. The great narcissist. That's what these white men have controlled and have made this... Uh, Society, a society full of uh, people who think that they are supposed to have their way under every and any circumstance, right or wrong. And 90% of the time, they're wrong. Indeed, the record for the last 20 years shows exactly the same or similar portion who have been charged with a horrible crime. Quite a number of those one-third alleged cases of the assault that have been personally investigated by the writer have shown that there was no foundation for fact it, for the charges. Yet the claim was not made that there were no real culprits among them. The Negro has been too long associated with the white man not to have copied his vices as well as his virtues. Let me say it again. The Negro has been too long associated with the white man not to have copied his vices as well as his virtues. But the Negro resents and utterly repudiates the efforts to blacken his good name by asserting that assaults upon women are particular to his race. The Negro has suffered far more from the commission of this crime against women of the, his race by white men than the white man's race has even suffered through his crimes. Very scant notice is taken upon the matter when this, the, the condition of affairs. What becomes a crime deserving of capital punishment when the tables are turned is a matter of small moment when the Negro woman is, a, is the accusing party. So, in other words, these white women, um, you know, a lot of men suffer far more than commission of a crime than should have been just by the accusations of white women. But since the world has accepted this false and unjust statement and narrative and the burden of proof has been placed upon the Negro to vindicate his, races, his race, he is taking steps to do so. The Anti-Lynching Bureau of the National Afro-American Council is arranging to have every lynching investigated and publish the facts to the world, as has been done in the case of Sam Holes, who was burned alive last April at Newman, Georgia. The detectives, I want you to know that, so there was police and stuff then. The detectives' reports showed that Holes killed Cranford, his employer, in self defense, and that while a mob was organizing to hunt Holes and punish him for killing a white man, not till 24 hours after the murder 
was the charge of rape embellished with psychological and physical impossibilities circulated. That gave the impetus to the hunt and the Atlanta Constitution's reward of $500 keyed the mob. Keyed the mob. Keyed the mob. To the necessary burning and the roasting pitch. See, that's what that's what the media does. Of 500 newspaper clippings of that horrible affair, nine-tenths of them assaulted Hose's guilt, assumed Hose's guilt. Simply because his murders, his murderer said so. And because it is the fashion to believe the Negro particularly addicted to any species of crime. Because he's a crime addict. All the Negro asks is justice. A fair and impartial trial in the course of his country. That given, he will abide the results. But this question reflects the entire American nation. From the several points of view. First, on the ground of consistency. Our overwatched, our overword, our watchword has been the land of the free and the home of the brave. Brand, brave men do not gather by the thousands and torture and murder single individuals. That's not what brave and uh, noble uh, 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 men do. So gagged and bound that he cannot even make a feeble resistance or defense of his behavior. Neither do brave men and women stand by and see such things done without conjunction or conscience, nor read of them without protest. Our nation has been active and outspoken in its endeavors to right the wrongs of the American Christian, the Russian Jew, the Irish home ruler, the native women of India, the Siberian exile, and the Cuban patriot. Surely, surely, it should be in the nation's duty to correct its own evils. Second, on the ground of economy, to those who fail to be convinced from any other point of view, Touching this momentous question, a consideration of economic phase might be might not be amiss. It is generally known that moms in Louisiana, Colorado, Wyoming, and other states have lynched subjects of other counties and countries. When their different governments demanded satisfaction. Our country was forced to confess their inability to protect and subjects in the several states because of our state right doctrines, or in turn demand punishment of the lynchers. This confession, while humiliating in the, in the extreme, was not satisfactory. And while the United States cannot protect, she can pay. This she has done. And it is certain, oh, uh, and it's and it is certain we'll have to do it again in the case of a recent lynching of Italians in Louisiana. The United States already has paid in amenities for lynching nearly a half a million dollars. Now y'all know it's so much more now, and I have the statistics, and I want to read them. I'm not going to do it in this one. That'll be in another video. But just how much money we have paid out as a nation for all these lawsuits, for the police brutality, and police painting, uh, 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 planting drugs, beating people, lying on them. Uh, the same behavior you're seeing today. Let me need to, I'm sorry, that you're seeing in this book. Third, for the honor, excuse me, for the honor of the Anglo-Saxon civilization, no scoffer at our boasted, uh, no scoffer at our boasted American civilization could say anything more harsh than it does than the American white man himself, who says he is unable to protect and honor his women without resort of such brutal, inhuman, and degraded ex 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 exhibitions 
and characterize lynching bees. The cannibals of the South Sea Islands roast human beings alive to satisfy hunger. The red Indian of the West Plains tied his prisoners to the stake, tortured him, and danced in fiendish glee while the victims writhed in the flames. His savage, untutored in mind suggested no better way that the wreaking vengeance upon those, no other way than by wreaking vengeance upon those who had wronged him. These people knew nothing of, about Christianity and did not profess to follow its teachings. But such primary laws as they had lived up to. No nation, savage or civilized, save only the United States of America, has confessed its inability to protect its women by, uh, saved by hanging, shooting, and burning of the alleged offenders. Finally, for the love of country, the love of country now, no American travels abroad without blushing for shame for his countries on this subject. And whatever the excuse that passes current in the United States, it avails nothing abroad. With all the powers of government and control, with all the laws made by white men, administered by white judges, white jurors, prosecuting attorneys and sheriffs, with every office of the executive department filled with white men, no excuse can be offered for exchanging an orderly administration of justice for barbarous lynching and unwritten laws. Our country should be placed speedily above the plane of confessing herself a failure at a self-government. This cannot be until Americans of every section of broadcast patriotism and best and wisest citizenship not only see and defect in our country's armor, but to take necessary steps to remedy it. Although lynches have steadily increased in numbers and barbarically during the last 20 years, nowadays the way to kill people is just to have the police shoot them down. That's the modern form of lynching, you guys. That's the modern form. Where you don't get a judge, you don't get a jury, you just get shot. Okay? Ahmaud Arbery, that type of stuff. That's Okay, or a Derek Shaman. Uh, <clears throat> <clears throat> this cannot be um, until Americans at every section, the broad, the broadest patriotists, and the very best and wisest citizenship, not only see the defect in our country's armor, but take the necessary steps to remedy it. Although lynches have steadily increased in number and barbarically during the last 20 years, there has been no single effort put forth by the many moral and philanthropic forces of the country to put a stop to this wholesale slaughter. Indeed, the silence is seemingly condemnation grow more marked as the years go by. That's why you got to punish those guys for the... Uh, 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 and you got to continue to hold people accountable for that insurrection. Because this is what happens when you don't. You continue to do the behavior. Continue. So look where we are now. A few months ago, the conscience of this country was shocked because after two weeks' trial, a French judicial tribunal announced Captain Dreyfus guilty. And yet, in our own land, under our own flag, the writer can give day and detail of 1,000 men, women, and children who during the last six years were put to death without a trial before any tribune on earth. Humiliated indeed, but altogether unanswerable, was the reply of the French press to our protest. And that was, stop your lynches at home. Before you send your protests abroad. So don't come over here trying to check us about our house. When y'all house is dripping blood. This article was written by Ida B. Wells Barnett in Chicago. Uh, Old to tribute to our history month.
very important that we acknowledge we acknowledge what has been done to us and the lynch laws in America who have who who haven't been abolished that haven't been abolished just revised digital 2.0 now 5.0 10.0 whichever way you want to say it okay you guys I'll be back with some more black history education for y'all in terms of uh, the Holocaust in America that were subject to black people and we need to know this part of our history and thanks to the writings of people like Ida B. Wells, Barnett and others, Claude McKay we need to address some of these things that have been perpetrated against us and it should make us better not bitter better and all the more eager, eager to protect ourselves our families and our whole culture so with that being said y'all I'm going to let this go and I'll see you in the next video Okay, please, if you like what you hear, please subscribe, share, uh, please give your, leave your comment below, and leave y'all know articles and things that about Ida B. Wells and what her purpose was, how her writings affected um, the time, the signs of the time. I'd like to hear from you. So, please leave your comments below, y'all, and uh, I'll see you in the next video.